Hello and welcome to week 27 of this 52-week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk to you about distributed file system, DFS, and specifically the DFS R, the replication part of it. Now DFS comes in two parts and it's been around for many years now and built into Windows. It's, it's native Windows product, it's not a third-party product. And replication, if you need to replicate between multiple servers, two or more servers, we need to find a way to do it. And there's a few different ways to do it. Of course, you can do the old-fashioned copy command with a batch file or xcopy. And robocopy is also available. And, for example, if we go to robocopy, it's now built right into the operating system. It's not a separate download. And you can see the help here if you type robocopy slash question mark. And that works for many situations. Uh, what, but it's generally a push in that you would only run it at select intervals. Let's say you'd use schedule tasks and you'd run it every minute. And it works good. One of the disadvantages is deletes. If you delete on one server, it doesn't necessarily know to delete on all the other ones because it's not sure uh, if it was just added or deleted or what. So this is a good tool generally for one-offs or if you just want to do a push from a central location to other locations, it works good. And it is an option that's available. But today I want to talk about DFS. So DFS has two parts to it. One is a namespace. In fact, let's go through the install wizard and I'll show you kind of the two of these here. So if we see the server manager, and actually I've added to the server already, so let's pick this server instead. And this is our, uh, by, by the way, let me cover this again, is we see the domain controller is this one here. And you can see kind of this teal color, is that what the color would be? I'm not sure what it is. And then we see this other other color blue. And so if we go to the server management, server manager, and we go to roles, and add a role, next, and file services. So we'll select that, hit next, and we can read all this if we want, and hit next. And it's DFS, so namespaces, is to do with actual like UNC pass and it allows full redundancy so if a server fails it can continue to work so there's no single point of failure it leverages the Active Directory multiple domain servers and it works good it's not what we're covering today though it's a replication that we're looking into and this is how do we take that content and push it to multiple nodes and it could be your web content it could be your images it could be uh, dependency file dependencies or the other thing we'll be covering soon is our shared configuration. It works excellent for shared configuration. And for the most part, DFS works great, but it does have some issues that you can run into, uh, particularly when you have fringe situations. It eventually starts to outgrow. You can outgrow it. And if you have more than half a million or a million files or folders within the structure tree, sometimes it starts to struggle. If you have a real large amount in the hundreds of thousands of files or folders in a single folder, it also struggles. Uh, real large files can struggle as well. Uh, you know, sometimes you just need to increase the staging area. There's different solutions you can do. But as long as you have a generally standard situation, DFSR works great for keeping nodes, keeping content in sync. And you can work with multiple servers, not just two. So I want to cover DFS, especially because of shared configuration. I prefer the DFS configuration here that I'll be showing over this week and, and the next couple. So what we're going to do is let's do this install. And so we'll just check this, hit next, and install. And it's installing here, nearly done. OK, that's finished. So we'll hit close, and we now have DFS is installed. And you can see it here, DFS management. Now, if, if you have the web edition, then you're not going to see that option in server management. manager. It's kind of odd. Uh, but yet DFSR is still supported. And so the way to do it is from the command line. And you can type server manager cmd install and fs dfs replication. And hit enter. Of course, it's already installed. Now, uh, so it just says no change. Now, notice it says it's deprecated. And that's because the Windows PowerShell commandlet is supposed to be used instead. But you'll be able to use this command for a few years or do the PowerShell method instead if you prefer. But that shows that it is available even on Web Edition. Okay, so now we have the service is installed on both servers. Now what we want to do is actually start to set it up. So let's dive in and see how this works. So I switch back again to the DC server, although really didn't matter. And we'll go to DFS Management. 
and replication. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to say new replication group. And we have a couple options here. The replication group is a special one for really just a two server situation here. But the multi-purpose replication group will work for most web scenarios. So I would look at this, hit next, and we'll give it a good name. So let's actually set up our IS shared config in preparation for next week's lesson. So IS shared config is just our friendly name. So now it asks what our members are going to be. And so we can find out, and I covered before, this is a vast net service. And so it gives us these names automatically. So let's just use the ones it gave us. So we can enter that. And the other one I happen to know ends with the 09. So hit OK and give it just a minute or so to find the members. And there we go. So we'll hit next. And it gives some options here. There's only two nodes in my example. So a hub and spoke is not available, but that's possible if you have three or more nodes. And full mesh will work in most situations. And then no topology is an option as well. allows you to customize it more. But full mesh works in most situations. You can now choose how much bandwidth if you want to limit the amount of bandwidth it uses. And also the time that it runs can also be customized. And so what we can do is specify the primary member and where this is most important is the first replication. You want to make sure that the one that has the correct information is replicated to the other. You don't want a blank folder to overwrite all the legitimate information there. Okay, so we'll hit next. So now that what it's going to ask us is what folders we're going to point to on each of these. And so we'll hit add and browse and notice C dollar sign. It's really the C on the 08 node. And we're going to set this up in INET Pub. And actually, I do have the folder already created. So we'll select the IS share config. And the permissions I had confirmed before, custom permissions, that it just has system and administrators. And before, as in when I created this folder prior to recording this. And so now we hit next. And this was for the primary member. Now what we do is we have all the additional ones, in this case just one, and this is for the primary memory is 08, but this is for 09. And by default it's disabled, which is kind of useless if we want this to actually work. So we'll go in, we'll enable it, and select the path, and we go to INET Pub, and notice again, I had set this up before, and but you could actually make the folder here. So we'll say OK, and hit Next, and it gives us an option to verify everything and we'll hit create and everything looks successful. Now it says replication won't happen immediately. It may wait till your domain controller needs to replicate it at whatever the polling interval is. And so let's give it a try. It probably won't work here right away. And so we'll go to C, INET pub, IS share config and let's just create a dummy text file and just put something in it here. Now I'm going to switch back to the other machine and we're going to go into I have pub I have share config and it's not here yet. Okay, so what we want to do is we can wait, let's say an hour, for the group policy to update. They update at regular intervals, it's not pushed down. And so we'll do a GP update. And let's give it a try. We're just playing a GP update. We may need to do a GP update for us. In fact, let's just do that right away just to save uh, the experimentation. Uh, this oftentimes will require you to log off the server, depending on what you've been doing. And what this does, it just pulls back from the domain controller and it forces that interval. It just does it sooner than it normally would. So it's safe to do on a production machine. And let's just do this again with a slash force. In this case, I didn't have enough open. It wasn't requiring me to log off, but it may require to log off. Okay, so that's finished but we see that this hasn't worked yet. Switch back here. Okay, so this should catch up in a bit. It didn't work right away for us. Let me show you how you can troubleshoot this and we can get a bit more information. So in replication, we can select the IS share config. This is the shared folder we just set up and you can see some useful information. We see the membership and the local path to each and you can see the member, the server name. You can see the two different machines here. Connections is where you see that 08 is set to replicate to 09 and 09 to 08. And if you do a full mesh, for example, then the more nodes you have, they're all going to have all the other ones in it.
So let's do a create diagnostic report. And we'll say health report. We'll hit next. And we'll hit next. And we want to include both members. And we'll hit next. And we'll include all the data. In fact, look at this. You can count the replicated files and folders, which is kind of useful. So we can say next and create. So this just views a report in a browser. And we see we have a couple errors here. So let's see what they are. And, okay, so we have some errors on each machine. Uh, this one here, for example, the DFS service is restarting frequently. And so let's go to that server, and let's just check Event Viewer. And application log itself looks fine. Let's check our system log. Oh, it still looks pretty clean. Not sure what it's complaining about. Let's go to our services. Now, I do have to mention that I had been working on it a little bit prior to recording this, and so I've probably just left in a little bit of a messed up state. And hopefully, you don't run into this. Uh, but if you do, here's how you troubleshoot it replication, let's just restart that service. And this is kind of a stab in the dark in terms of troubleshooting right now. So we'll just give it a second try here. And DFS replication. We'll restart the service. Okay. Good. Now what we'll do is let's see if we have any luck with this. And again, we have our new folder. So let's create a copy of that. We'll go to our second machine. And there we go. Okay, so now it's worked. Uh, I don't really know why it didn't except the restarting the services worked and also I do know I had the machine in kind of a pending state for some previous stuff I was doing so it wasn't necessarily as friendly as it should have been but now for example let's go to new text document let's try it out so we're gonna say test this is a change to the doc here and this is on our web02 so now let's go to the other machine and we're gonna edit the one and look at this immediately available on the other server and you can see the timestamp. So let's delete the copy. In fact, you know what let's do is let's see if I can get the two of them kind of lined up beside each other. I have the two different machines and we should be able to see both of them. So I'm going to delete the copy on this one here right now. So I hit delete. Be sure yes. And over in this one, see it immediately disappears. Again, we can go in here. This is a test and let's make a few lines of that. I'm going to hit save, double click, and look at that. As fast as I could save and double click, it replicated. Now, this is not always the case. If you have a real large directory structure, it can take longer to replicate. But when you're dealing with something really small like this, it's actually very fast, which makes it a prime candidate for IS Share Config, which we'll be covering next week. So these are the basics. Now understand, if you do run into issues, like I kind of ran into some issues, it's not quite as easy, and that's where the diagnostic report comes in. You may have firewall issues if you're not on a local LAN, and you may need to punch some holes. And actually, the Windows firewall, if I go into here and type just FIR for firewall, go to the Windows firewall with advanced security, and that's going to use port 135 and also a random ports above 1024. So it can potentially take some customization if you want to lock that down across a, a wide area network across the internet. If let's go here and view, and we're going to show. Okay, so I'm going to show here and then turn off the three hides. And now you can see this DFS private, or I should say DFS are private. And this has a bunch of information with the conflicted files. In fact, this did have that conflict when it first set up. And so it had a bit of a clash there at first. If you wanted to, you could research that. You have some deleted installing pre, and then your, your staging folder where it stages here. So this can be customized. There is some flexibility and uh, in terms of DF DFS. Some of the management is done with DFS management, the MMC snap-in, and the rest of the management, there's some registry keys that you can do some more advanced things. For example, there's certain file types that are ignored automatically. So there's an overview of DFS. Hope you found this useful, and I hope you have a great week.